All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, who says in his glorious book, And we have commanded man to be kind to his parents. His mother bore him through hardship upon hardship, and his weaning takes two years. So be grateful to me and to your parents. All will return to me. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him till the end of uh, time. Kindness is a comprehensive word that covers all sublime traits, good attributes, and high morals that bring tranquility to hearts, spread love among people, and bring about stability within societies. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about kindness, he replied, Kindness is the noble behavior. No doubt that one's parents are most deserving of his kind treatment. Allah commands us to be kind to them, care for them, and treat them with humbleness. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of our Prophet, peace be upon him, teach us that the ideal son-parent relationship. Allah the Almighty says, So your Lord has decreed, do not worship anyone but him, and be good to your parents. If one or both of them grow old in your presence, do not say fie to them, nor reprove them, but say gentle words to them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, showed that being kind to one's parents and fulfilling their rights are among the best of acts second to prayer, which is the main pillar of Islam and its greatest right. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about which act is the most pleasing to Allah, he said, performing prayer at its proper time. Then he was asked, what's next? He replied, kindness to parents. Then he was asked, what's next? He replied, jihad for the sake of Allah. Islam has stressed the value of being kind to one's parents, showing gratitude to them and caring for them. However, it paid special attention and care for kindness to mothers. Thus, a person came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and asked, Who among people is most deserving of my kind treatment? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Your mother. He asked again, Who's next? Your mother, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said again. He then asked, Who's next? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said again, Your mother. He again asked, Then who? Thereupon the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, than your father. This should not be a source of wonder, because if it is not a mother who is most deserving of kindness, who would be? Who could be more deserving than the one who carried you in her womb for nine months, which equal nine years in terms of hardship? The one who suffered the hardest pains while giving birth to you, the one who nursed you and with her hands she, she cleaned your dirt. The one who favored you with food to herself. If you suffered any illness or pain, she would show unbearable sorrow. The one who, if she happened to be given a choice between your life or her death, she would opt for your life without second thoughts. Who is most deserving than the one whom Allah the Almighty commanded us in his book to be good to, saying, We have commanded people to be kind to their parents. Their mothers bore them in pain and delivered them in pain. Their period of bearing and weaning is 30 months. It is a blessing from Allah to guide a person to be kind to his parents and to his mother in particular. If one is guided to do, to do so, then he is blessed with a great favor and bounty. He will see the fruit of this in the form of success in this life, along with the reward, mercy and forgiveness in the hereafter. Kindness to one's mother has fruits that a person reaps in this life and the afterlife, including his needs will be fulfilled, his dilemmas will be solved, and his supplications will be answered. 
Omar narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, While three men were walking, it started to rain, and they took shoulder in a cave in a mountain. A big rock rolled down from the mountain and closed the mouth of the cave. They said to one another, Think of good deeds which you did for Allah's sake only, and invoke Allah by giving reference to those deeds so that he may remo remove this rock. One of them said, O oh Allah, I had old parents and children. I used to graze the sheep for them. On my return to them in the evening, I used to milk the sheep and start, start providing my parents first of all before my children. One day I was delayed and I came late at night and found my parents sleeping. I milked the sheep as usual and stood by, the, by their heads. I hated to wake them up and disliked to give milk to my children before them. Although my children were weeping because of hunger at my feet till the day doomed. O oh Allah, if I did this for your sake only, remove the rock so that we could see the sky through it. So Allah removed the rock a little and they saw the sky. Then each one of his two companions invoked Allah for a sincere deed he did till Allah removed the rock and their trouble was resolved. Also, it is reported that whenever Omar ibn al-Khattab met people from Yemen, he used to ask them, Is there amongst you Uwais ibn Amr? When he found Uwais, he said, Are you Uwais ibn Amr? He said, Yes. Omar said, Are you from the tribe of Karn? He said, Yes. Omar again said, Did you suffer from leprosy and then you were cured from it except for the space of Adirham? He said, Yes. Omar said, Is your mother still alive? He said, Yes. Omar said, I hear the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, There would come to you, Uwais ibn Amr, with the reinforcement groups from the people of Yemen. He would be from the tribe of Karan and the branch of Murad. He had been suffering from leprosy from which he was cured except for a spot of the size of a durham. His treatment with his mo mother would have been excellent, and therefore, if he were to swear by God that something wa would happen, Allah will certainly make it happen. So, if it is possible for you, then ask him to ask Allah to forgive you. So, Omar said, ask forgiveness for me. He always did so. Omar then said, Where do you intend to go? He said, To Kufa. Omar said, Let me write a letter for you to its governor. Whereupon Ways said, I love to be among the poor people. This hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, proves that answering the supplication of Ways was due to him being kind to his mother. Another fruit is the great reward. Muawiyah as sulami said, I came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I want to go for jihad with you, seeking their pie, the face of Allah, and the hereafter. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Woo to you, is your mother still alive? I said, Yes. He said, go back and honor her. Then I approached him from the other side and, and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I want to go for jihad with you, seeking thereby the face of Allah and the hereafter. He said, Who to you? Is your mother still alive? I said, yes. He said, go back and honor her. Then I approached him from the front and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, <coughs> I want to go for jihad with you, seeking thereby the face of Allah and the hereafter. He said, Woo to you. Is your mother still alive? I said, Yes. He said, Go back and serve her.
for paradise is there. And the same connection Kaab ibn Ujra, may Allah be pleased with him, said, A man passed by the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the companions were impressed by the man's strength and energy. They said, O Messenger of Allah, if only this was for the sake of Allah, he, peace be upon him, said, if he goes out to work for the sake of his young children, he is striving for the sake of Allah. If he goes out to work for the sake of his, of his aged parents, he is striving for the sake of Allah. Another fru fruit is the expiation of sins and bad deeds. Ibn Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have committed a great sin. Is there any repentance for me? He said, Do you have your mother? The man said, No. He said, Do you have a maternal aunt? The man said, Yes. He said, Then be dutiful to her. Another fruit is being admitted to paradise and attaining high ranks. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, draw, uh, said that, I said, O Messenger of Allah, which of the deeds draw one nearer to paradise? The Prophet replied, Prayer on its proper time. I said, What's next, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, Kindness to one's parents. I said, What's next? He replied, Jihad in the cause of Allah. In the same connection, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I saw myself in the paradise while asleep, and I heard the voice of a man reciting the Quran. So I asked, Who is that? They replied, This is Haritha ibn Nu'man, whereupon the Prophet said, This is how being dutiful to parents does with man. Haritha was one of the most dutiful to his mother. So, let us all be dutiful and kind to our fathers and mothers. Let us be certain that being kind to parents is a debt, and so is ingratitude to them. We should take into account that one's debt shall be repaid. Not only that, but ingratitude to parents is one of the reasons behind hastening the divine punish punishment in this life before the life to come. As declared by the Prophet, peace be upon him, who said, Two sins Allah shall not differ till the day of judgment, unjust behavior and ingratitude to parents. In another hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Three shall not enter paradise, the one who is disobedient to his parents, the drunkard, and the one who reminds people of what he has given them. Now, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon the master of all beings, Prophet Muhammad, his family, companions, and those who follow their footsteps till the day of judgment. Dear brothers, the heavenly laws agree on the obligation of dutifulness to parents, especially the mother. In this regard, Allah the Almighty says, And when we made a covenant with the children of Israel, you shall not serve any but Allah, and you shall do good to your parents. Allah the Almighty also addressed the entire humanity, saying, and we have commanded people to be kind to their parents. Their mothers bore them through hardship upon hardship, and their weaning takes two years. So be grateful to me and to your parents. All will return to me. Islam has actually shut the door before anyone who thinks of disobeying his parents. Some young men might see themselves as more religiously committed than their own parents, thus speak badly to them or even mistreat them. We say to those young people that the Sharia obliges us to be kind and dutiful to, be, to our parents, even if they are unbelievers. 
Thus, no one should take his parents' unrighteousness as a pretext to be undutiful to them. Allah the Almighty says, And if they try to make you associate with me what you have no knowledge of, do not obey them, and keep company with them in this world kindly, and follow the way of him who turns to me. Then to me is your turn, and I will inform you of what you did. Also, Asma bint Abi Bakr said, My mother came to me seeking some act of kindness during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when she hated Islam and was a polytheist. I asked the Prophet, saying, May I do her an act of kindness? He replied, Yes, do her an act of kindness. So, even if one's parents are disbelievers or trying to make you disobey Allah or disbelieve in Him, this does not give you the right to mistreat any of them. Rather, one should act upon the saying of Allah where He commands and keep good company with them in this world. While doing so, you should not think that such a behavior is some sort of favor you do them, but it is a right and duty which one will be punished for if not properly fulfilled. Blessed is he who acts kindly to his mother and strives to be dutiful to her. Abdullah ibn Umar said, the pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of parents, and the anger of Allah lies in the anger of parents. O oh Allah, we ask you to help us be kind to our fathers and mothers. We ask you to forgive them and to shower them with your mercy as they raise us when we were young. 